near and far in the family car. Near and far in the family car. Far and wide we're gonna ride. We're gonna ride in the family car. Let's get away, have a holiday. Let's get away, have a holiday. You're a king or queen when the world is green, and the world is green. It's a holiday, near and far in the family car. Near and far in the family car. Far and wide, we're gonna ride. We're gonna ride in the family car. Hi, this is Tom Glazer. I hope you're having a good time. Are you going somewhere or are you coming back? If you're going, I hope you have a very pleasant time. And if you're returning, I hope you have had a very pleasant time. The reason we made this car tape and recording is because we want you to have some fun right in your own car. And so we're going to help you pass the time by telling you about some games you can play right in the car. And every now and then, We'll have a car song for you to listen to or to sing along with, if you like, in between games. Incidentally, all the games I'm going to tell you about can be played by everybody, regardless of age, grown-ups and children, together or separately. All right, let's start with the most famous word game of all, Ghost. Now, I'm sure most of you have heard of Ghost and probably know how to play it if you like to spell. Ghost can be played by two or more people. First, you should have a dictionary along in the car to check spellings. The first person starts with any letter of the alphabet. The next person adds a letter. If the second letter forms a two-letter word like N-O, no, or A-M, am, why, it doesn't count because two-letter words don't count in ghost. Then, whoever's next adds a third letter to the first two letters. If the three letters now form a word like, say, C-A-T, cat, or R-U-N, run, again, it usually doesn't count and you continue. But if you're playing with very young children who just learned how to spell, say from four or five years to six or seven, you can make the rule so that three-letter words do count, so that whoever forms a word with the third letter is called a G, the first letter of the word ghost. You see, the idea is to avoid having any word end on you, because if it does, then you're a G, then an H, then an O, then an S, then a T, and at that point you're a ghost, and you lose the game. But most of the time, ghost is played with either four-letter words counting, or for older people, five-letter words. Just to make sure you have it straight, I have two young friends with me, and the three of us will play one game of ghost to show you how it actually works. We'll play where at least four-letter words count. Remember, you can't just add any old letter as you go along. You should have a, a real word in mind, unless you want to bluff, which you're allowed to do, of course. But if the next person can't add a letter to yours and suspects that you are bluffing, you can be challenged by that person. If you have no real word in mind, then you lose and get one letter of the word ghost. But if you do have a real word in mind, then the challenger loses and he gets a letter of the word ghost. Okay, let's try a game. I'll start with a letter C. I'll say C-A. And I'll say C-A-T. If you're playing the three-letter words count, then the second child lost because C-A-T spells cat. Gee, I'm smart. But if four or more letter words count, you continue. Now, let's see. C-A-T, C-A-T. Hmm. How about uh, C-A-T-C? C-A-T-C? Hmm. I challenge you. C-A-T-C-H. Catch. You're a G. Here's a hint for playing ghost. If you're stuck finding a letter, as in catch, run through all the letters in the alphabet mentally, like this, C-A-T-C-A, C-A-T-C-B, C-A-T-C-C, and so on. And this will help you find a word, possibly, or at least help you know what word the person before you is thinking of. If you can spell really well, you can try a much harder version of ghost, which grown-ups can enjoy even by themselves. We used to call this type of ghost, double ghost. In double ghost, you can add a letter not only after the letter you're given, but in front of the letter you're given. 
and in double ghost, four-letter words don't count. You must have at least five or more letters in the word to count. And to make it even harder, you can, if you wish, exclude any words which are formed by prefixes or suffixes, like singing from sing, or worked from work, or workable, and so on. Let's show you how double ghost actually works. I'll start with, well, with the first letter, with A. I'll say T-A. And I'll say T-A-N. Now it's my turn again. T-A-N. Let's see. I'll say um, T-A-N-G. With T-A-N-G, there are several possibilities. The next person could say T-A-N-G-L, thinking of the word tangle, perhaps. But you might get out of that by putting an N before T-A-N-G with the word entangle in mind. You see, Double Ghost is a much more difficult and interesting game of ghost with many more possibilities than regular ghost. But you must be old enough to spell very well before you try it. Before going on to the next games, let's say a word or two about something very important in a car. Car safety. The National Safety Council offers very good advice for parents to teach children about cars. First, keep seated. Keep seated. No moving about to play on your feet and no sleeping on any car shelf or ledge. Also, kids are safer sitting in the back than in front. Always wear safety belts and body straps if possible to keep seated. Second, don't touch. Don't touch. Don't touch door handles or any parts of the car, especially in front. And for heaven's sake, don't touch the driver while driving. Third, keep yourself in the car. Don't put your hands or legs or anything else out the windows. Fourth, don't make too much noise. Noise can make a driver lose concentration and cause accidents. Fifth, be considerate of the other people in the car. No fighting or roughhousing or bothering the grown-ups unnecessarily. Keep unwanted papers or garbage where they belong. Sixth, special locks can be put on car doors so that children can't open the doors from the inside. Now these are the most important rules for car safety for children, and to help you remember, here is a car safety song called Sing a Song of Safety. Sing a song of safety riding in your car. Please attach your seat belts driving near or far. Use directional signals turning left or right. Sing a song of safety, keep those accidents out of sight. Sing a song of safety and be sure to read the signs along the highway that tell you not to speed. Hospitals aren't funny when your legs are in a sling. Cars were never made to help you hear the angels sing. Sing a song of safety riding in your car. Please attach your seat belts driving near or far. Use directional signals turning left or right. Sing a song of safety, keep those accidents out of sight. Sing a song of safety, sing to mom and pop. Tell them also spell them, S-T-O-P, spell stop. Always keep your distance behind the car ahead. The life you save may be your own, remember what I said. Sing a song of safety, riding in your car. Please attach your seat belts driving near or far. Use directional signals turning left or right. Sing a song of safety, keep those accidents out of sight. There's nothing to do but to rallo. Not a thing to do but to rallo. As you ride along, you can sing this song. You can sing this song with a tooraloo. Near and far in the family car. Near and far in the family car. Far and wide, we're gonna ride. We're gonna ride in the family car. There's a very good game you can play in cars called I'm Packing My Trunk. Sometimes it's called Grandmother's Trunk. It's an alphabet and memory game. 
the first player says, I'm packing my trunk, and in it I put, oh, anything starting with the letter A, like apple, albatross, ante, or whatever. The second player then says, I'm packing my trunk, and in it I put whatever the first player mentioned, apple or albatross or whatever, and something starting with the letter B, like bike or broom handle or blocks or whatever. The third player mentions the first two items in order and continues with something starting with the letter C and so on. The idea is you must remember everything in order that was mentioned before alphabetically. If you miss or don't remember, you drop out and the last player wins. You can play with two or more people and it's very good fun. If you wish, you don't have to use only one word each time. You can make it harder by packing the trunk with complete phrases like Arnie's shorts for A, or Betty's green chipmunks for B, or cool as the Beatles for C. Get it? Let's play it for you one time to give you an idea. All right, I'll start. I'm packing my trunk, and in it I put an apple. I'm packing my trunk, and in it I put an apple and a brownie. I'm packing my trunk, and in it I put an apple, a brownie, and a chipmunk. I'm packing my trunk, and in it I put an apple, a brownie, a chipmunk, and a donut. I'm packing my trunk, and in it I put an apple, a brownie, a chipmunk, a chipmunk, a donut, and an electric razor. Two chipmunks, huh? <laughs> All right, you're next. I'm packing my trunk, and in it I put an apple, a brownie, a chipmunk, a donut, an electric razor, and a flapjack. I'm packing my trunk, and in it I put an apple, a brownie, a chipmunk, a donut, an eagle, and uh, That's wrong. It was an electric razor, not an eagle. Say, you know, you're right. So, in that case, I'd lose, and the other two players would play until one of them lost, and the third would win the game. Of course, it's possible sometimes for everyone to remember everything correctly up until the letter Z. This isn't very probable, though, but it is possible. And if that happens, why, you can all go to the head of the class and start over again or play another game. Near and far in the family car. Near and far in the family car. Far and wide we're gonna ride. We're gonna ride in the family car. Far and wide we're gonna ride. We're gonna ride in the family car. Continuing with another word game, there's one which doesn't seem to have a regular title. I've known it by the words which start the game, the words being, I'm thinking of a word which sounds like. You'll see what the title means when I explain how to play the game. Again, two or more people can play. To begin with, the game is played best with words of one syllable although older children and grown-ups can try words of more than one syllable, but it's more limited and therefore harder that way. Actually, it's just as much fun, if not more so, with words of only one syllable. Well, the first player chooses any one-syllable word which is easy to rhyme, like boat or dump or green and so on. Let's suppose he picks the word boat, B-O-A-T. He doesn't say the word aloud because it's up to the other player or players to try to guess his word in a certain way and that way only, like this. The first player, having picked the word boat, B-O-A-T, which he keeps to himself, as I said before, says, I'm thinking of a word which rhymes with goat, G-O-A-T. Now the second player tries to stump the player with a secret word and guess his word all at the same time. The second player thinks of what the secret word might be. Now he knows it must rhyme with goat, G-O-A-T, and he must think of another word which also rhymes with goat, G-O-A-T. He may say, for example, therefore, to the first player, is your word something you wear when it's cold? Now the player with the secret word boat, B-O-A-T, must try to guess what the second player has in mind. If he guesses, he says, no, I am not thinking of coat, something you wear when it's cold, C-O-A-T, coat. Then the third player continues with another definition which must also rhyme with goat, G-O-A-T, like this, for example. Is it a kind of cereal? If the first player guesses right, 
or even has a word which fits the definition, he says, no, I am not thinking of oat, O-A-T, oat. If the first player with a secret word can't guess the definition, then he loses and the other players win, and somebody else chooses a secret word. But if he does guess right, the game continues as before until somebody loses or is eliminated or guesses the secret word. Let's play it one for you. Now I'll start again. I'm thinking of a word which rhymes with jump. Is it what you get on your skin sometimes? No, it's not bump. Is it what a camel has? No, it's not hump. Is it what's left when you cut a tree down? Say that again. Is it what's left when you cut a tree down? Oh, when you cut a tree down. No, it's not stump. Is it what you do when you let dirt out of a dirt truck? Yes, it is dump. So you see, both the person who is it and the players try to stump each other. And whoever succeeds in fooling the other or others wins the game. Very well. Let's see what game we can play next while we're all in the car. But first, how about a song about a very important place which you almost always visit when you go driving. I mean, of course, the gas station. And of all things, this song is called the gas station song. And here it is, the gas station song. Here comes the gas station, tell Pa to stop. Fill up the gas tank, slip it, he slop. Slip it, he slip, slop, slip it, he slop. Fill up the gas tank, slip it, he slop. Some gas is high test, some gas is not. All cars must have some or they will stop. Or they will stop, stop, or they will stop. All cars must have some or they will stop. Here comes the station man in dungarees. Up to your car says, how many please? How many please, please, how many please? Up to your car says, how many please? He pulls up your hood, checks your engine for oil, looks in your radiator so your water won't boil. Your water won't boil, boil, your water won't boil. He looks in your radiator so your water won't boil. He looks at your battery and checks out the plugs and wipes from your windshield the squooshy bugs. The squooshy bugs, bugs, the squooshy bugs. He wipes from your windshield the squooshy bugs. Start up the car now and off with a zoom, zoom. Don't forget baby brother, he's still in the men's room. He's still in the men's room, still in the men's room. Don't forget baby brother, he's still in the men's room. There goes the gas station where cars must stop. We filled up the gas tank, slip it, he slop. Slip it, he slip, slop, slip it, he slop. We filled up the gas tank, slip it, he slop. I know a game called Famous Persons. Some people call it Botticelli. Botticelli was a famous painter. Now, here's what you do one player is it. This player picks mentally a famous person and tells the other players only what letter the name begins with. He does not reveal the whole name. Now, the other players have to guess who the famous person is. Here's how they do it. Let's suppose the it player's famous person is Einstein. He says, I'm thinking of a famous person whose name starts with E. Then, each of the other players in turn Try to think of other famous persons whose names also start with E. Suppose the next player thinks of Edison, for example. He will say to the it player, is your famous person an inventor? The it player must then guess an inventor whose name begins with E. Incidentally, it doesn't have to be Edison. If he can think of an inventor who's pretty well known whose name starts with E, that's okay too. Now, if he can guess, then the next player tries to ask a similar question of the it player, but with a different famous person in mind. For example, is your famous person an ex-president of the United States? The it player must then guess a president whose name begins with E, like Eisenhower. But if the it player can't guess what he's asked, then whoever asks the question which the it player can't answer is allowed to ask of the it player what is called one direct question about the person the it player has in mind. 
as, for example, is the person alive or dead. Then, as you proceed and get to ask more and more direct questions, you get to a point where you have a lot of information about the secret person, and finally, you can often guess who it is. Then, somebody else is it, and can choose another secret famous person. Now, just to make sure you get the idea of the game, we'll play it once for you. I'll start, and I say, I'm thinking of a famous person whose name starts with E. Is it an inventor? No, it's not Edison. Is it an ex-president? No, it's not Eisenhower. Is it a famous aviator? A famous aviator? Hmm. I can't think of any aviator beginning with E. I guess I'll have to give up. Amelia Earhart, now I can ask you a direct question. Is the person you're thinking of alive? No, the person is not alive. Is it a U.S. Senator? No, it's not Senator Eastland. Is it the middle name of Admiral Richard Byrd? Gee, I don't know that. I guess I'll have to give up on that one. The answer is Evelyn. Now I ask another direct question. Is your person a man? Yes, my person is a man. You see, now the players know that the secret famous person is a man who is not alive. Okay, let's continue. Is it the name of a famous old-time pitcher? I have to give up on that one, too. George Earnshaw. Oh. I ask another direct question. Your famous person is a man and not alive. Mm -hmm. um, was he a scientist? Yes, he was. And now the players have learned something else about the secret famous person. And that's how the game continues until somebody usually guesses correctly who the secret person is. If nobody guesses and gives up, then the it player wins. Get the idea? I'll bet you've all heard of the game called 20 Questions. That's a very famous game. It's uh, somewhat different from Famous Persons or Botticelli, but it also has some similar things about it, too. Once more, one of the players is it. The it player chooses something. Oh, almost anything at all. He can choose a person, a place, or a thing. He then gives the other players only one hint about what he's chosen, one clue only. He tells whether it's animal, vegetable, or mineral. Now, that means that anything in the world must fall under one of those three categories, animal, vegetable, or mineral. Like any living creature would be an animal. That means a human being, too, or animals would be animal. Plants and flowers and trees and growing things, which are not creatures, would fall under the vegetable category, and anything not alive would fall under the mineral category. For example, Peter Rabbit, or Abe Lincoln, or Elsie the Lion, or a grasshopper, or a bee, would all be animal. But the pea on which the princess slept in the famous fairy tale, or the apple in the Garden of Eden, would fall under the vegetable category, while the Rock of Gibraltar, or a famous diamond like the Kohinoor diamond, or Mount McKinley, would fall under the mineral category. After being told which category, the players have 20 questions, and only 20, to guess the secret word. Let's play it to show you how it actually works. I'm thinking of something. Is it animal, vegetable, or mineral? It's animal. Is it alive? Yes, it is alive. Is it a man or a woman? It's a woman. That's two questions. You have 18 questions left. Is the woman under the age of 15? No, she's not under the age of 15. Is the woman under the age of 30? No, she's not under the age of 30 either. That makes four questions, which leaves you 16. Is this woman well known? Yes, she's very well known. Is she European? No, this woman is not European. Is she Asian? No, she's not Asian. Is she American? Yes, she is American. Now, let's see, that makes eight questions. You have 12 left. Let's see, let's see. Um, it's a woman who is well known and over 30 years of age. Mm -hmm. Does she live west of the Mississippi River? No, she does not live west of the Mississippi River. Is she a musician of some sort? No, she's not a musician of any sort. Is she in the field of education? No, she's not. She's not in the field of education, and that makes 11 questions, and you have nine left. Is she a writer? No, she's not a writer. Does she live in New York? No, she doesn't live in New York. Is she an actress? No, I'm afraid she's not an actress. That's uh, 14 questions. You have only six left. Does she live in the South? No, she doesn't live in the South. Does she live in Washington, D.C.? Yes, she does live in Washington, D.C. Now, let's see, that makes 16 questions. You now have four left. Is she Linda Bird Johnson? 
No, she can't be Linda Bird Johnson because Linda Bird Johnson is under 30, remember? Is she Senator Margaret Chase Smith? Hmm, that's a pretty good guess, but she isn't Senator Margaret Chase Smith. Now, only two questions left. Is she Lady Bird Johnson? That's right. You guessed it. She is Lady Bird Johnson. You win. Now, that's how to play 20 questions. After one player is it, the other players can, of course, take turns. You should remember, uh, need I say, that in any of these games, make them easier for younger players and harder for older players. Before we play another game, let's have a break for something to eat, shall we? Let's have the restaurant song. Hey, how many biscuits can you eat this morning? How many biscuits can you eat this evening? How many biscuits can you eat standing on your bony feet this morning, this evening, right now? Brother likes his steaks well done, honey. Brother likes his steaks well done, baby. Brother likes his steaks well done. See those onions hit and run, honey, sugar baby of mine. Mommy watches calories, honey. Mommy watches calories, baby. Mommy watches calories while we starve on cottage cheese, honey, sugar baby of mine. Sister likes her pork and beans, honey. Sister likes her pork and beans, baby. Sister likes her pork and beans in a yellow submarine, honey, sugar baby of mine. Daddy eats his burgers rare, honey. Hey, Daddy eats his burgers rare, baby. Daddy eats his burgers rare, sitting in his underwear, honey, sugar baby of mine. So how many biscuits can you eat this morning? How many biscuits can you eat this evening? How many biscuits can you eat standing on your bony feet this morning, this evening, right now? Play, 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 playing in the car when you're driving very far. Sometimes it gets kind of boring. Thought I heard the motor roar. It was only Daddy snoring. Play, 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 playing in the car. Look out your car window. What do you see? Cars, that's what you see. Cars, 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 cars. Big cars, little cars, middle-sized cars, Fords, Chevys, Ramblers, Cadillacs, Oldsmobiles, Pontiacs, Mercuries, Lincolns, Imperials, Mustangs, Chevelles, Dodges, Plymouths, Chryslers, Volkswagens, Station Wagons, Trucks, Mercedes Benzes, Renaults, Citroëns, Volvos, Saabs, Rovers, Jaguars, Rolls Royces, Old cars, new cars, 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 American cars, English cars, German cars, Italian cars, French, Swedish, and Japanese cars. Cars, 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 what kind of a car do you have? Tell you what, let's play a car game, like license plates. You can look out of your car window and try to spot license plates from other states or countries. Give yourselves one point per license plate and five points for every license plate from out of the country, like Canada, Mexico, Puerto Rico, and so on. The most points wins, of course. Or let's play another license plate game. Watch for numbers on plates and write them down as you yell them out. Whoever gets to 100 first, or 200, or 500 wins. Or make up your own game with license plate numbers. Or you can play a game with the letters you see on license plates. Try to find every letter in order from A to Z. Or make up words from letters on license plates like flower from FL. Or make up your own game from letters on license plates. Signs along the road make a very good car game too. Take the first letter of every sign you see on the road and try to form the alphabet. Whoever does it first wins. If you're playing by yourself, you'll have to win, won't you? You'll come in first, second, and third, all by yourself. 
Now, there are other games you can try with signs along the road, like writing down as many rhymes as you can think of from words you see on signs, like danger, stop, right turn, and so on. Play, 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 playing in the car. Tired of the scenery, I'll tell you how to pass the time. Come and play a game with me, that's the kind of person I'm. Play, 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 playing in the car. Say, how about a game you can play based on the different kinds of cars you see along the road? You'll need the help of a grown-up who knows the makes of cars for this game. You could form teams, perhaps, each child with an older person for a partner. You can give yourselves one point for American cars, uh, two points, perhaps, for VWs, and three points for other foreign cars. Or if you get tired of playing games with cars or road signs, you can try a game called Things Along the Road. Give yourself one point for spotting a bridge, two points for a restaurant, three points for a motel, five for a police station or a bowling alley, or other points for other things you might see along the road. Hmm? Play, 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 playing in the car. Trees and grass all look the same. Looking out gets very tiring, so we better play a game so our eyes will stop perspiring. Play, 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 playing in the car. Have you ever tried to figure out how long it takes to get to a certain place you can see way down the road? Or have you ever tried to figure out just how far this particular place is? You can make up a very fine game called How Far and How Long. You pick out a landmark you can see, or maybe even a place you know about which you can't see, then, using somebody's watch for how long and the car's odometer for how far, Try to guess how long and how far to this particular place. The closest guess wins. And if you have enough people playing, you can have second and third prizes. Play, 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 playing in the car. Playing slower, playing fast. It's so nice to be beginning. They say nice guys come in last. Maybe that's why I am winning. Play, 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 playing in the car. Do you like to tell stories, perhaps? A very funny way to pass the time in your car is to, is to play a game called telling stories. The first person starts and makes up part of a story, any story, and then stops. Then the second person takes up the story and continues making up more story than the third person likewise, and so on, everybody taking turns. You'll find this very funny as you go along because you never know what's going to happen next. Play, 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 playing in the car. Tired of the scenery, I'll tell you how to pass the time. Come and play a game with me, that's the kind of person I'm. Play, 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 playing in the car. Here's a good tip for you. It's always a very good idea to bring along several pencils and sheets of paper in the family car because there are a number of writing games that you can play while driving along. Here are just a few. First, drawing. Instead of just drawing any old thing by yourself, which you can do, of course, if you want to, try drawing something at the top of a piece of paper, a head, let's say, all by yourself. Then fold it over. Don't show it to anybody else. Then, after you fold it over, give it to the next person. And then the next person draws something under that without seeing what the first thing was. Then he folds that part of the paper over. Then he passes it along. By the time you get to the end, you have the most hilarious thing you ever saw. Sometimes you'll have a, a head of a human being with the body of a, of a goat and the, and the feet of a lion or something like that. It's really hilarious. Or you can try um, uh, playing states with paper and pencil. Write down as many states as you can possibly remember, and the person with the most correct states wins. And you can write down... Uh, as many state capitals as you can remember and play it that way too. Or you can write down as many foreign countries as you might remember or other categories like presidents of the United States. Now, that about brings us to the end of our games and songs in the family car. Don't forget, drive carefully, get home safely, and have a happy trip. Goodbye. Near and far in the family car, near and far 
in the family car. Far and wide, we're gonna ride. We're gonna ride in the family car. Let's get away, have a holiday. Let's get away, have a holiday. You're a king or queen when the world is green. And the world is green, it's a holiday. Near and far in the family car. Near and far in the family car. Far and wide, we're gonna ride. We're gonna ride in the family car. Nothing like home, on land or phone, wherever you roam, there's nothing like home, like a cozy mouse in your cozy house, there's nothing like home, on land or phone, near and far, in the family car, near and far, in the family car. Far and wide, we're gonna ride, we're gonna ride in the family car. Far and wide, we're gonna ride, we're gonna ride in the family car.